Hello, this is simply about networking protocols and today I'll talk to you about multi-chassis lock. It could be known as MLAC, MC lock uh, from Cisco side, it can be known as VPC, Virtual Port Channel, MEC, MLACP and for another vendors and it can be known with another abbreviations and acronym, uh, acronyms. Well, uh, you already understood that there is no standard for this feature and you should know uh, you should use a vendor specific documentation that uh, describes how exactly this feature implemented and uh, configuration flow and configuration commands to configure it on your devices i will tell about general feature um, functionality that is common for almost uh, all implementation of multi chassis lock feature well <clears throat> Uh, as you remember from a video about port channel lags, static lag has uh, a problem. Now, lag always uh, balancing traffic between ports that are active members of this lag. And uh, it takes in consideration only operational status of the lag. So if ports up, it is an active member of the lag and it is participating, participating in balancing. In case of configura uh, configuration that is presented on schema, when on another end some ports um, belongs to one device and another ports belong to another device, this could cause a problem of losing streams and traffic because, for example, we have some network segment behind device 3 and uh, network segment behind device 2 and due to hashing algorithm that cannot take into consideration this difference. We can receive traffic that is targeted to segment 2 on device 3 and vice versa. Target, uh, traffic targeted to segment 3 on device 2. And if there is no any connection between those sections, uh, this traffic being lost. But we don't know that, we don't control that. This is why dynamic implementation, uh, implementation of the dynamic lag uh, using LACP protocol takes into consideration, uh, um, let's say, nesting of the ports and only ports of the same device can be added into the same dynamic lag. On the other hand, we have connectivity problem when server or server's host uh, should be accessible 24-7 without any interruptions. And probably sometimes for some reasons we expect that the server should handle traffic that is bigger than uh, uh, maximum capacity of single port. So we would like to have a possibility to balance in traffic and use more ports to transmit this traffic somewhere outside. There are multiple mechanisms to resolve this problem and unlock one of these mechanisms. Well, first of all, why just connecting two links uh, as a standalone ports uh, will not work? We can configure device one in the way that uh, uh, all traffic targeted to device two or network segment behind device two will be sent from port connected to device two and same as for device three. But then in case uh, there is some problem related to the link and we are losing here link connectivity, port goes down, whatever, whatever, we are losing connectivity with the full segment. That is, this is what we supposed to avoid. Lack, uh, lack, just lock will not work uh, due to the problem that I described above. But lock specification does not forbid to uh, implement additional features around the lock feature. This is what all vendors did and they implemented their versions of uh, multi-chassis lock feature that is presented here. We have ports, blue ports, that are parts of multi-chassis lock on one device and on another virtual device, let's say, 
we have green ports that are regular ports that are connected to these network segments uh, that are uh, targets for our traffic from servers. And we have additional peer ports where additional protocol is running. Uh, the, this protocol controls status and situation on those peer devices that uh, containing uh, part of MLAC ports. Uh, exchange information configure those devices to uh, manipulate traffic correctly and control status of MLAC ports in order to react on some changes. Uh, <laughs> as you understood, this uh, control protocol is proprietary. It means it is implemented almost by every vendor separately and it operates with one link with multiple links it uses them to transmit traffic or just to keep control keep alive uh, so you should use documentation of your vendors to uh, to get detailed representation of the peer port functionality in general it is used to run this control traffic and transmit data traffic uh, when something happens with MLAC ports on one of the devices. <laughs> How traffic being processed? When traffic is sent to outside, on device one it being balanced according to the hashing algorithm and sent to our peer devices. If for example, on device 3, we receive traffic that is targeted to the uh, segment behind device 3. It is being forwarded to appropriate ports and being sent to this segment. If on device 3, we are receiving traffic that is targeted to network segment behind device 2, it's being sent to peer port, transmitted to device 2, and then being forwarded to ports uh, and into segment. Schematically, we can present it like that. Well, this is true for both sides. So uh, we have uh, full connectivity and we have controlled interconnection between segments that uh, we see, we know, and we have influence on. What happens on link failure? Well, uh, regular lag functionality port goes down, it is removed from balancing algorithm. Now traffic is being balanced to uh, active ports only. In this, uh, in this example, is being sent to this single port, transmitted to device 2. Traffic targeted to segment 3 by peer ports is transmitted to device 3 and to segment 3. And uh, traffic targeted to segment 2 is being transmitted by device 2 directly to this segment. That's simple. In opposite direction, uh, we potentially have an issue. Uh, for example, we need to transmit some multicast broadcast traffic or unknown unicast traffic uh, that is flooded at some point at some configurations. Uh, well, it can be sent to multiple ports on the same device to be addressed. And then we have a situation when some stream, some packets received by device can be sent to MLAC port and to peer port by this mechanism of uh, multicasting, broadcasting and so on. By peer port it is being transmitted to peer device, to neighbor device and also can be sent to MLAC port. So now we duplicating packets or stream that packets and streams that received on the our device one on server. That is, uh, well, not expected by all the specifications related to the networking. This needs to be omitted. And this is where ports isolation mechanism is introduced. Port me uh, isolation mechanism in general says that traffic that aggresses device on uh, peer port cannot be forwarded to MLAC port on the same device. In traffic that aggress, ingresses, ingresses, enters device on peer port cannot be transmitted or aggressed from 
MLAC port of the same device. This is the port isolation. This is, schematically it can be presented like that. So uh, this is how we removing this problem with potential duplication of the packets that being received on our target. Uh, this is true for both sides. So all, all, all. This is symmetrical kind of protocol. <laughs> when uh, we have a problem or link goes down, port goes down, whatever, our control protocol detects that MLAC port is in trouble, and it performs. Uh, well, two general actions. First, it reconfigures the device to transmit traffic this time to our server to peer port. And second, on neighbor device, it removes port isolation flag. Now there is no isolation. Now traffic can be forwarded from peer port to MLAC. And we have full connectivity again. Perfect. Uh -huh. By the way, when I prepared this video, I met um, uh, in documentation for one vendor a pretty specific implementation of this isolation mechanism. So, in most for most vendors, isolation mechanism is like traffic received on device through peer port cannot be forwarded to MLAC on same device. This specific mechanism says traffic that is destined to our server means can be forwarded to MLAC should not be forwarded to peer port. Uh, this is always will depend on uh, your vendor how what is inside of it uh, software hardware how it is supported what is simpler from vendor point of view and so on and so forth so again uh, carefully read documentation your vendor specific documentation about MLAC MC lock, VPC, whatever it's called. About multi chassis lock. Okay, how this mechanism of uh, resending all the traffic to peer port works. Uh, as you remember from videos related to switching and routing, there is an FDB table and FIP or routing table on the device. And those FDB and FIP table uh, define for known traffic where to send it from this device when it tried to aggress. Our control protocol in normal operation configures both FDB and FIP in the way that target for traffic that is targeted to our server is MLAC. So when we have unicast traffic destined to our server, it's by FDB and FIP, FDB and routing table forwarded to MLAC. In case of multicast, this traffic isolation mechanism works that blocks unnecessary duplications. In case of some issue happens, our control traffic detects that this is a problem with MLAC port and it reconfigures device where this problem appeared. It reconfigures FDB and routing tables in this device in the way to forward traffic to peer port now, all tar um, target port is peer port now here. And on neighbor device, it removes this isolation flag. And now traffic is running as described on the scheme through peer port to MLAC full connectivity, no problems. That simple. Thank you. Have a great day.